Anthony Gordon. If you're not familiar with him, he's a handsome, hip, young gunslinger with a play style that's like, Gordon well, the move the sidearm for six. Ball in. You can see Harris. He's got to get all the way over to the numbers, but looking to go over the top and the reach out. And Washington State's got first and goal. Gordon steps up, throws, and it is caught. Gordon moving up. Throws over the middle, Martin the cat. Now obviously, all of his film doesn't look like that. Because if it did, he'd have way more hype behind his name and I wouldn't have to explain who he is and whatnot. That being said, he's not a bum either. While it's true, his numbers were inflated due to the nature of the offense he played in, which included lots of screens and other short passes that simply got the ball into the hands of his playmakers and let them do them, even when you remove all of his passes of under 10 yards, he is still among the most accurate in this draft class. But we're not here to break down his play. In fact, there's actually already been a few breakdowns done by some fellas that are way more qualified than me. Nah, today, we're talking about his best potential NFL team fits. Ready? Let's get into it. First and foremost, a team that originally I wouldn't have included if not for a recent free agent acquisition that suddenly made this one of the ideal places for him to be. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Initially, I would have ruled them out due to Bruce Arians and his famous vertical style offensive philosophy. It's not that Gordon can't throw deep, we just didn't see a lot of it at Washington State because Mike Leach's air raid offense didn't call for it that much. And I figured good old B.A. would want to try his hand at someone who did test the deep waters more in college, like a Jordan Love or Jacob Eason or hell, even Cole McDonald. But then, it was announced that none other than Tom freaking Brady, the GOAT, was coming to Tampa Bay. And now that whole idea has been turned on its head. Because Brady doesn't have the strongest arm these days. And will now likely work together with B.A. and Byron Leftwich to devise an offense that accentuates his strengths and that plays right into Gordon's wheelhouse because his strengths are not too different from those of Tom's. Accuracy, touch, and anticipation. And what better teacher could there be for a scrappy underdog quarterback with that skill set than the frickin' goat, right? Number two, the New England Patriots. Originally, they were my best case scenario for Gordon because Tom Brady. But now that he's departed, they're still a great fit, but I'm gonna have to give the nod to wherever TB12 is. That being said, New England is still the home of 20 years of dominance cultivated through the acquisition and development of talent that other teams overlook. Bill Belichick remains the greatest head coach slash GM of all time, and his results speak for themselves. Not to mention the presence of Josh McDaniels, whose offense has provided several quarterbacks of varying skill levels to parlay their time in it into starting jobs elsewhere in some capacity. The most notable being recent Patriots backups, Jimmy Garoppolo and Jacoby Brissett, who last year started for the 49ers and Colts respectively. McDaniels has experience working with quarterbacks that have skill sets like Gordon's, and I have no doubt that after an appropriate period of watching and learning, Anthony Gordon would be able to pick up and thrive in that system. Number three, the Bears. This one is actually really interesting given the fact that so many Bears fans seem to be very on board with the idea of their team selecting Gordon. I suppose just about anything would appear to be a better idea than continuing with Mitch Trubisky at the helm. The Bears are very well equipped to develop young passers, especially if they're naturally accurate. Matt Nagy comes from Andy Reid's coaching tree and consequently runs a variation of the West Coast offense inspired by Reid. He's joined by offensive coordinator Bill Lazor, whose credits include coordinating the offenses for six different teams to varying degrees of success, as well as quarterbacks coach John D. Filippo, whose last three jobs included a Super Bowl victory and the opportunity to work with two former Air Raid quarterbacks, Nick Foles and Gardner Minshew, who was Anthony Gordon's teammate at Washington State for a season. 
Suffice to say, Chicago would be an ideal situation for Gordo, but I'd hold off on buying that Gordon jersey for now, Bears fans, because word around the campfire is your team is targeting FIU quarterback James Morgan. But we ain't here to talk about him, so moving on. Number four, the Minnesota Vikings. Now, while the Vikings did just re-up on Captain Kirk's contract, at the end of that, who knows how they'll feel about him? Hell, who knows how they'll feel about him by the end of next year? It wouldn't hurt to add some depth at quarterback to develop behind him while they get it figured out. And naturally, Gordon would be a good fit. With Gary Kubiak firmly entrenched as the offensive coordinator and assistant head coach, and his son employed as the quarterback coach, that's an environment conducive to growth. The Kubiaks would be able to improve his technique and minimize mistakes. And then, by the end of Kirk's contract, Gordo would be ready to take over. Now, before we get to my last team, the one I personally hope he goes to, first, we gotta dig into a few honorable mentions. The Indianapolis Colts, they need a guy. The Oakland Raiders, because they may want to move on from Derek Carr. And the Atlanta Falcons, let's face it, Matty Ice is closer to retirement than he is his prime. Also, if you haven't subscribed, you totally should, because I like to have fun around here and I'm almost always talking football. So go hit that shit, hit the notification bell, damn straight. But without further ado, number five the Miami Dolphins. Well, this is sure to upset a large number of Dolph fans out there who just can't seem to get off of Tua's dick. What? You dare to suggest that the Finns draft any quarterback other than Tua touch my body? And the answer is yes. Let me start by saying I like Tua. He has done everything to solidify himself as the best quarterback in the bunch, except for the injuries. And before you get to click clacking away in the comments, I've been reading the same news as y'all and I know he's getting cleared and hitting all the benchmarks and shit and that's great. But the concern isn't about this injury or any of them specifically, but all of them put together and how that projects into the future. But here's a fun homework assignment for everyone. Take to the web and find me a football player who dislocated their hip and went on to have a long, prosperous career in the NFL. Because I haven't been able to find such a person. The only player that I keep coming up with is Bo Jackson, who was already in the league and then got right up after suffering that injury and walked himself to the locker room. He would never set foot on a football field again, at least not as a player. So look it up and get back to me. But back to the point at hand. There is not a better QB prospect slash team fit in this draft than Anthony Gordon to the Miami Dolphins, and I'll explain why. The first thing is the scheme fit. With Chan Gailey installed as the team's new offensive coordinator, he brings with him his variation of the spread offense, which itself shares many similarities with the West Coast offense, the run and shoot, and of course, the air raid. The latter two of which Gordon has experienced running having run a version of the run and shoot in high school and junior college, and of course the air raid at Wazoo. Gailey's offense, in its base form, is gonna try to spread the defense out as much as possible to get the ball into the hands of his playmakers in space. Sound familiar? The ideal quarterback in this system is a passer that can consistently throw with accuracy, touch, and anticipation. The three things Gordo happens to excel at. And for folks about to say, well, I read that Chan Gailey likes mobile quarterbacks for his system. Chill out. Review Anthony's tape. While he's not exactly a track star, he possesses enough mobility to move around, extend plays, and steal first downs if absolutely necessary. But he would prefer to get the job done with his arm, and that used to be considered a good thing. Other folks have expressed concerns over his ability to pick up an offense other than the air raid. But he proved at the Senior Bowl that that would not be an issue, as he was clearly the best quarterback in the game, and even got to the point where he was able to go no huddle and call his own plays. That's high football IQ. 
Number two, the culture fit. If you're not familiar with Gordon's story, I'll try and give you the abridged version. He was a zero star recruit coming out of high school, despite having a stellar couple of years at Terra Nova, in which he threw for 8,305 yards and 81 touchdowns in just two years. He got no scholarship offers. Despite that, and despite the fact that he was drafted to play baseball, he opted to enroll at City College of San Francisco to continue pursuing football. In his lone season there, he threw for 3,864 yards and 37 touchdowns en route to a CCCAA state title as a true freshman, where he was also awarded the offensive MVP honors for his efforts. He still received no offers from Division I schools and prepared to return to City College of San Francisco for his second year when he got a phone call from Mike Leach telling him that they had a spot for him. Of course, it wasn't happily ever after, as he had to wait and learn first behind Luke Falk, who went on to the NFL briefly, and then behind Gardner Minshew, who also went on to the NFL and is currently projected to be Jacksonville's day one starter in 2020. And Mike Leach said the competition between Gordon and Minshew was actually very, very close. Suffice to say, though, this young man has faced adversity and stuck with it. Others would have transferred out of that situation, but he remained, proving that he's a team first kind of guy who's mentally tough. All reports indicate that he's a hard worker and a true student of the game, which aligns with what the Dolphins are looking for. Both Chris Greer and Brian Flores indicated that intangibles are important. They want a team first guy who's tough, smart, competitive, and loves to play. They want character. Gordon aligns with all of that. Not to mention, have you heard him speak? Probably not. He sounds like a professional. When he talks, he sounds like the adult in the room. Check out this snippet from a post-game interview following an absolute ass whooping at the hands of Utah. That's a lot of plays out there, a lot of yards, a lot of touchdowns, you know, so uh, just we need to be better as a team, myself included, of course. You know, I need to be a lot better at protecting the football and going through my reads more diligently and uh, ultimately just finding the end zone. That's what the offense needs to do. Obviously, the body language is that of a guy whose team just got destroyed, but did you hear that professionalism in his voice? I saw a comment where someone said that the head coach has this one brainwashed because at no point did he blame the coach or the game plan for the loss. And yeah, an argument could be made for that, but an argument could also be made that Mike Leach coaches his guys up to take personal accountability instead of pointing fingers. And believe me, there were many points throughout the season where Gordon could have laid the blame squarely at the feet of their defense, but he never did. And he would have been justified in doing so. Because even if you add his interceptions and fumbles up together, you get a total of 21 turnovers. But when you weigh that against his 48 touchdown passes, they should have won more games. He was constantly deflecting credit and praise for the wins while accepting blame and culpability for the losses, like a leader should. The one thing I heard him say a few times throughout the season was something to the extent of, I'd trade all these stats for wins any day of the week. Because he doesn't care about his personal clout. He plays because he enjoys playing and he wants to win. That is a quarterback I'd be willing to bet on. And that's going to do it for us this time. So tell me, do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you want to hear about a different quarterback? Let me know in the comments. But please, none of the top three guys. I don't want to talk about no damn Tua, Burrow, Herbert, but I may be open to Jordan Love if you sway me. But I'm not interested in talking about those other guys because you can search them on any site and come up with like 30 articles or videos about where they would fit. I'm more interested in the guys that aren't getting covered as much. So be sure to like and subscribe as next time we'll be talking about Tyler Huntley and his best fits. I'll see you then.